Okay. All right, everybody, Tyrell Cannon here. Uh, not sure how many folks are on here at the moment, but I'm just doing a quick impromptu live stream. I wanted to show off my uh, Frank Frazetta, Fantastic Worlds of Frank Frazetta art book, which was recent, re recently released, and uh, it is fantastic, as the title says. Uh, before that, just so you know, my name is Tyrell Cannon. I'm a comic book artist as well. I've done a few different books, uh, Game Over Man, IDKFA, Eris. I also did a book called Beef Bros, and I have an upcoming book called The Schlub coming from Image Comics, written by Ryan Stegman and Kenny Porter. Um, so if you want to check out my work, there should be links here on my channel, but just go to TyrellCannon.com. I am at T Cannon Comics on all the social medias. So this book is so huge <laughs> that it doesn't even really fit on the table. Um, <laughs> It's a pretty amazing book. It is something like 400 pages. It weighs, I think, 14 pounds, uh, which is enormous. Um, but it is worth every penny that I paid for it, and I recommend everyone grab a copy. Frank Frazetta is one of those illustrators that will always be you know, known as one of the all-time greats. And, um, you know... His stuff has always inspired me since I was a little kid in the video store and saw the cover to Fire and Ice. I was like, what is this? And then we watched the movie. It has all these great Frazetta sketches at the beginning, this great Frazetta style to it. Um, and then as time went on, I learned more and more about him as an artist. Um, the book itself is really great because it gives you lots of different kinds of examples of his work. Um, so I'll do a quick flip through here, show you some of the stuff that I like. Um, I mean, I like all of it. But it's got blow-ups of some of his comic book panels, uh, which is really cool to see. You can really see a lot of the ink work and brush work in here. You can see where he laid down all the different ink on here. Um, little specks of white out uh, to do these stars. Zip tone. It really is like an artist edition. Um, and then you get into some of his I iconic paintings as we go through it here. Um, I'm sure everybody has a favorite Frank Frazetta piece. Um, his, this first chunk of the book is almost all uh, comics work, pencil and ink stuff, um, pen and ink stuff. Um, there is some painting speckled throughout here as well. But you can really see how early on in his career, this is 1940s, 50s here, he did some really amazing comics. Uh, Thunda, uh, Thunda. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say it, Thunda. Um, but you can see early on the different inking techniques he, he was using on almost every page. There's a lot of brush work in here. There's dry brushing. There's some um, nib definitely going on back here on his back muscles. Um, kind of the pulled lines here. Really amazing stuff. They got little sketches from his sketchbooks in here. Man, look at those elephants. It is a book that comes in like four languages, so each section, the text is actually repeated in different languages, but what's great is that the imagery is not, so there's new images as every section goes, goes on through here. He did some stuff on Little Abner um, with Al Cap. So back then, from my understanding from reading some of the stuff in the book is that, and seeing some interviews with him is that they did lots of collaborations with other artists kind of behind the scenes. And it, I don't know that it was an intentional collaboration in all cases as much as it was, uh, <laughs> hey, this page needs to be turned in on Monday, come work on it, which is pretty neat. Um, I feel like that doesn't happen as much anymore as it used to, um, you know, because it happened all the way up through, I was, I was reading stories of Jim Lee and, and Wills Portacio and, and uh, Scott Williams doing that on some of the X-Men pages where there was a lot of teamwork going on. And same thing on some of these early comics that Frazetta was involved with. Um, 
Got some pencil sketches here. Just incredible stuff to see all this. The the publishing of the book too is is very well done. They they have a lot of the black and white stuff against a white background. Um, they keep a lot of the you know, they go all the way to the edges so you can see sort of how it was. Now these are probably shrunk down a little bit. When we get to some of the paintings, they're more uh, closer to the actual size of the painting. I mean, only an inch or two off uh, in most cases from the painting size. So it's really cool. It's almost like you're seeing the paintings close up. Same thing on all these comic book pages. I'm sure he drew some of them a little bigger and some of these are blown up. And so when you see these blow, blow ups, you can really I mean, really see more detail than, I mean, than even he probably intended for people to see. As an artist, books like this and artist editions are invaluable. They, they really provide not just inspiration, but you can really get in there and kind of see what kind of mark making they're doing. You know, this, this little page right here, even just seeing the zip tone on here, the nib up here, these rough brush lines on his pants. Man, oh man, it's super exciting stuff. This is my first live stream in quite some time, so I, I hope that everything is sounding and looking okay. Um, even if it isn't, uh, hopefully I can do some more of these in the future and get, get some of this stuff uh, ironed out. Here's a classic Frazetta image. Um, this creature coming through, all this very um, Wally Wood sci-fi type stuff. It was very big at the time. And that iconic signature of, of Frank's. As you can see, lots of black and white work, which is fun because Frank's generally known for his color work. Um, probably most significantly being this, this Conan piece, um, which really became what everyone knew as Conan. I think I saw the Conan movie probably quite a while before I was aware of who Frank Frazetta was, and seeing the John Milius Conan you could tell he took a lot of inspiration from these paintings that, that Frank Frazetta did. And I feel like there's a version of, of Conan that existed before Frank Frazetta painted him. And then there's the version that we all know now that we all think of as, as Conan. And I, I think that he made such a big impression on that character's likeness that there's really no going back. I don't think you can go back to the old versions of, of Conan before that. And I would say very similarly with, with uh, John Carter Mars, he, he was also which is what you see on the on the cover of the book. He was also very instrumental, I think, in sort of uh, getting you know getting those those characters to have a a power that they didn't have before. There's just so much power in his paintings and in the imagery, it, you know, in an abstract way. You know, there's a balance of color and light and dark and, and shapes and forms that come together. You know, got this great triangle composition here. Look at all these caricatures, all these caricatures, incredible. And then as we get into more paintings, the printing is really nice because they did sort of a spot finish, almost like a glossy finish on the paintings. So they kind of have that oils, you know, look. And then the paper, the, ba the black paper behind it is more of a matte look. Um, man, look how, look how these blues and oranges pop. And sorry for the glare here, guys. I'm still getting some new equipment. They have some preparatory sketches for some of these uh, paintings that he's done. They have some unfinished paintings. They have paintings he went back and touched up because apparently he oftentimes would, you know, paint um, paint paint some of these these uh, covers and then have to maybe paint clothes on on some of the the women or or uh, you know uh, cover some of the crotch areas of of the men um, in some of these places. And so he was. I guess the kind of person who would go back and, and rework his paintings. I, I can't imagine doing that because for me, if I went back to work that was finished and then tried to, <laughs> and tried to, you know, do it, it would. Uh, I would never. It would never be done. I would just continue to go back to it. This old monster stuff is great. We got Dracula, the Wolfman. This painting right here of this bear and this soldier with the sword. There is very minimal finish on this when you get into sort of you know doing detailed hard line finishes on things a lot of this is shape and color you know the sticks up here it's, it's just some some smudges with the paintbrush and 
you know, these marks here on the bear that read his hair are just dry brush bristles. Um, but this blue kind of desaturation here at the bottom with this super contrasty orange on top, <clears throat> it gives this composition so much power. And in some of these earlier paintings, he did a lot more, um, you can see textural work on some of the rocks where he lets the paint build up and kind of form these shapes and textures throughout. This one here is one of my favorites um, from Blazing Combat, I believe. This little guy's posture up here on the top of the tank, kind of as he gets shot in the gut, you can kind of see him hunched over. And then all the texture he has down here, this big shape of color surrounding the, the focus of the action, and then the, the slight line of the bullet coming back down to this guy, and then leading back up from this green to the blue to the purple back up into the tank. I mean, it's a beautiful infinity layout. The other thing I was struck by looking through this and reading some of this stuff about you know the ways he would paint is is just that this balance between shape and detail and finish where he was able to imply so much with um, brush strokes and he did lots of preparatory drawings I think there's this maybe idea romantic idea that that uh, Frank was um, just sort of like went at the canvas and it all came out but the, you can see in the book there's a lot of preparatory sketches and what you see in here, you can see a, a small color study and then the finished piece over here. Um, but anyway, what you can see is that he's getting everything exactly where it needs to be in the sketches and in the color studies so that when he does get to the final piece, he can be really brave with these brush strokes and, and make big brush strokes where, they, where there are big areas of color and sort of let the canvas show through, which he does a lot on his paintings, especially in the background. And so that creates almost a texture or air particulates and this building up of atmosphere when really he's doing thin paint over a canvas that's been treated with a different color. Um, and then the other thing he does is that a lot of times that the, the, the edges of the paintings or the things, the shapes leading up are done in a very impressionistic shape way with soft edges. And then as you get into the detail of some of the foreground figures and the focal points, like this uh, blade up here in her arm, it gets really detailed and a little more precious and a lot more hard lines. So we'll use some hard outlines. And what that does is it, it's a, the, 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 uh, the shapes and stuff pull you into the painting and then you start to zero in on these areas of um, detail and then that pulls you through it. At least that's how I read it. I mean, this is another great example. This is just a bunch of brush strokes, big white line, and then you have all the detail kind of here on these parts of the figure. This one blows me away too, man. This is a great example of that. He's got these sort of shapes up here. This hand is just, oh man, it's it's barely there, but everything is there. There's a little creases to show the 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 dip, you know the little spaces between the, the knuckles. The way this finger fades out puts it at a slightly different pain, plane than the fingers that are coming forward. And then it's just a hard line here and the dark brings you down into him, and then he is all hard shapes on the edge of his body. you got this super bright orange, black outline, and these chunky, chunky thighs. But then when you get down to his feet, it's just down into the background. And this is all abstract. But it implies a lot. And what it does, I think, is it, and then of course here's the death field. I think what it does is it, it pulls, it, it, it not only pulls you in, um, it gives your, your brain something to really focus on, when you are enthralled in the painting, but when you're first approaching it, your brain is doing that thing with your eyes that, where you're filling in the missing information and you're creating a rocky surface down here with lava around it. When really what we're seeing down here is some splotches of orange, a little bit of red, literally just little circles of, of dry brush here around the horse's feet. But you, you, you know, your brain wants to fill in that information. So it starts to do it as you come to the painting and then as you get closer, you start really dig it into the like the chain mail, the edges of the horns and all that. It's very efficient, um, but it takes time to get up. I think he builds up through the sketches and the color studies to get to the point where it reads as effortless. 
Apparently, this is the only time he ever drew a vehicle in a painting, was his bus on this uh, gauntlet poster. The colors on these just pop. This thigh, I've, I've been obsessed with this thigh right here. It's just a chunky little shape, but you get a cast shadow over the side of his thigh here. You get the idea that the light is hitting this thigh and then just the darkness under the knee here sets it forward in this back. And it's just, it is just the most awkward, chunky shape, but man, it reads as a perfect thigh coming out of there. And this is all fuzzy, wet, you know, wet paint right here, you know, dry, you know, wet paint that dried and kind of see through. Amazing stuff. Again, I, I can't recommend this book enough. I mean, you could just study one aspect of his painting, whether it be the colors or the, the way he renders his figures, the way he kind of twists them and gives them power that they didn't have before. Um, it's, it's really exciting, you know, as an artist to see someone who's kind of good at all the magic tricks and kind of learn from them. And, I, and as a viewer, his stuff has, it has such a uh, iconic subject matter in a lot of it that I think, you know, as, as just a, your, your casual viewer, you can start to look at some of the other things going on. And there's that initial impression, that the, the power of a figure like this, you know, with his back arched in a way that's it's unnatural, but it, it, it shows the power of this swing that's about to happen. And you can start to kind of dig into some of that stuff and, and, and look at all the different parts of the painting. Another classic. Um, Conan the Destroyer. And some of these ink drawings are another thing that I, I long ago got a book of these ink drawings and you know I, I only knew him as a painter before that and when I saw some of those it changed my whole opinion of them. These horses man. Angular, you know, planar. There's these uh, he uses the brush strokes to help guide sort of the the motion of what's happening. So you know, the hoofs coming up and down, he has brush strokes that are vertical with them. You know, the bend of the neck, the brush strokes kind of go with it. The way this guy's legs are, you know, flying off, off the horse there. He's a very cheeky guy. <laughs> There's always lots of attractive women, attractive men as well. I mean, if you're into naked people, you can't go wrong with Frank. You can see some of his studies here, uh, little watercolors that he did. Um, to a painting that I don't, I don't think that one was ever completed. If you can't tell, it's got just about everything you could possibly want from a Frank Frazetta book. They, they outdid themselves here. Um, beyond just like seeing these paintings in real life, this is probably the closest a lot of us can get. I mean, there is a Frazetta museum that is capable of being gone to, but not all of us have the time, resources, and uh, finances to get there. I did see some of his paintings at San Diego Comic-Con at one point. Um, actually, here we go. It was, he had done this painting for Robert Rodriguez, and I think Rodriguez owns some of his paintings and for Dusk Till Dawn here. And I think that those were the ones that were on display. Maybe they had borrowed some as well, but there was maybe 15 to 20 paintings at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. This was way back, maybe 2006 or something. Um, and it was the first, I mean, it, it was the first time I had seen his work in person, and I think I was almost, um, I, and I was baffled by how impressionistic it was when you get close up to it. Because again, looking at this stuff, both reduced, but also just through the eyes of, of like um, a kid who sees it, it all looks so detailed and your brain is filling in all this um, finish. And, and it, you know, as you, you begin to start drawing, at least for me as an artist, a lot of it comes down to precision. You really want to be precise. And to see how much he accomplished with, with impression, impressionistic techniques and, and uh, abstraction of figures. I mean, I, I gained a whole new appreciation for his work at that point. And of course, I'm not going to show everything here. I mean, I uh, want to have some respect for the people who published it. I think we should all, you know, you should not be afraid to go buy this book. Um, it is really fantastic. Even space stuff uh, he was able to do. I mean, most of his stuff was more in the fantasy realm. Um, a lot of Tarzan, Conan. Vampirella is very nice. 
Um, and then as you get toward the back, they have a bibliography that shows how pretty much every painting of his and drawing of his has been used. Um, even if some of them have been used multiple times, it'll show you every time the death dealers showed up on a cover, all the different ways they've used the different things. And it's cool to see them with the logos too. He didn't do the logos in any of these cases, I don't think, but um, as someone who loves to do letters and, and graphic design stuff, I, I, it's a lot of fun to see this. Um, and sort of see the difference between the different eras and the different types of books as far as how they decided to use the paintings and how they reproduced. Movie posters. And that's that. It's, again, you know, um, as you can see here, let me hold up the... It's very big. Um, you know, there's my hand on it. And it is very heavy, <laughs> as you can see. Um, but really great. Uh, you know, there, there was a time when I wouldn't have even thought about buying something like this. But since I did, I wanted to share it with everybody and encourage everybody else to, to do those things. I think art is something that it's really nice if you can experience it in person. And if you can't own a Frazetta painting, which most of us can't, this book is, is probably the best substitute you can get. Um, cool. Well, before I sign off of here, I want to show you guys a few other things. I did C2E2 this last week. And... Uh, that is the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo, and it was a lot of fun. And um, I just wanted to give a couple quick shout-outs here. I got some cool books. Uh, here's a little book from my friend Max Bear. He does books for the Revolution Brewing Company. He does some really cool cartooning. Um, I got this Lucas Martinez book, um, which is full of really cool, kind of psychedelic, uh, very indie sci-fi kind of a book. Really neat. Um, I'm going to forget a lot of people here. Oh, shout out to my buddy Don Cardenas. He gave me this copy of Brass, uh, the oversized black and white. This is a book that came out in the 90s by Richard Bennett and Aaron Weisenfeld and Monica Bennett. Um, Weisenfeld was a writer, and I think he helped with layouts on issue three. Um, I wish he was still making comics, but Bennett is an insane person with his inking here. It's a master class in inking techniques. Every page has techniques that that any artist should be checking out so this has become a great reference so thank you don for that he does a show called um comics coffee and metal you should definitely check that out and then i was able to trade some art which was awesome um this is from jimmy uh i want to say kuse is how you say his name uh jimmy uh has has been a con buddy for a while i've seen him at some shows and we look at each other's work and we finally decided to trade um so i traded him for this piece i i love the motion he's accomplished here and a lot of the detail he's put on things this cape is great this sort of shine here across the front of the speeder bike the detail in the backgrounds he's got clothes on the lines is a great piece i traded him one of my uh, robot uh, mech I, I did a mech pitch that i traded him a page for and then another good friend of mine is Dave Acosta, who a lot of people know uh, from his work on Elvira. Elvira was a big uh, part of my childhood, mostly because my Uncle Dave was a huge fan, uh, I think for obvious reasons. Um, but Elvira was one of the first things to get me into horror movies, along with some of the other horror hosts like Sven Gulli and those guys. Um, and Dave did some, some great work on Elvira, so I had to get an Elvira page. This one has some signature Dave stuff. Dave does great women's faces uh, and bodies as well his rendering of fabrics the way he did the background around this boat here um, this guy in midair here is really nice the cast shadow Dave is very good and he's currently working on a book called Terror War with uh, Saladin and this page was another one that really blew me away um, not only did he draw this sort of low angle on this face here which is gives me a panic attack just thinking about drawing it but you see a lot of different inking techniques here. He uses silhouettes back here, but then he has these great um, brush strokes to indicate fabric. The way he did on this guy here, um, so confident in the brushwork, really great. And then the rendering on the, the hair, oh my gosh, it is so good. Every character has their own hairstyle and the way he renders it is unique to them. This face as well, the delicateness across the bridge of his nose and these little hatch lanes on the cheek, very cool. Uh, I recommend checking out Terror War. It's a really cool book as well. 
and thanks to Dave and Jimmy for the trades. So uh, hopefully I'll do some more of these. We will see. Um, I hope you guys will check out my work. Uh, let me know what you thought of this one. If you want to see some more art books, I've got a heck of a collection over here and I'd love to share some of that with you. Um, I'm also hoping to do some page by page walkthroughs of my own comics uh, as they're getting released. So, you know, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, but even if you don't do that, come back and watch with me. Hope you guys are all having a great night. Thank you.